Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Big Flipper for the live performance exercises in Module 3. Uh, so, we're going to jump right into it. We are not going to do the recording of the time and all that. That's definitely an exercise that's going to help you as the student, but it's not really going to be super helpful for you to watch me do that. So, we're going to do the parts that will be helpful for you to watch me do. Uh, first thing, we'll open up ROT13. Uh, we'll open up a replit. Scroll on down, go to JavaScript, and you know what we're going to do. We're going to change it to dark, turn off code intelligence, and then we've got some code that we're going to deobfuscate. So we're going to highlight all of this starter code, go to route 13, copy what comes out, and then paste it over in our replit. A forward slash, and an asterisk, and an asterisk, and a forward slash is going to give us a multi-line comment. <clears throat> Flip every chunk of n characters in a string where n is any positive integer greater than 1. Note that this is intentionally very similar to the previous problem. Please focus on getting a working solution with the tools you know well. Practice the interactive collaborative interview style that's described in the documentation. Uh, <clears throat> that is poorly described in the documentation. And again, we went over why that's the case. And essentially what we're trying to do is present you with a bunch of different ways that an interview can go successfully. Um, there's been talks of an effort to try to streamline those instructions, but I'm actually on the other side of that. I like the idea that the instructions become a little bit more confusing because that's what you're about to dive into, is a world of confusing instructions. And the people who kind of rise to the top, which is to say the people who get jobs doing this, are people <clears throat> uh, who are diligent and careful and read things you know, thoroughly and decide for themselves which things make the most sense. Now, of course, the opposite argument to that is that we are giving you a technical interview. Theoretically, we should give you good instructions on how to do that technical interview. But the problem with that is that there's really not one successful way to interview. We want you to be able to be a good pair programmer. We want you to know how to use basic JavaScript syntax. We want you to be able to um, handle things in an intense situation with calm grace, basically. Uh, and there's not really one way to do that. There's lots of ways. So we're going to present a lot of different ways. And... Yeah, that's why we, you know, jocularly put is poorly described in the documentation. So let's say is imprecisely described in the documentation, which, oddly enough, is a more precise definition for that. So let's get to the fun part, the problem. Variable input is equal to a short example here on line 11. Variable output is equal to flip every n characters with the input and a second argument of five. Concept of a lot of the output, so they're breaking down. So essentially, the previous one was you flip every other character. This one is going to be you flip every whatever this number describes characters. So you grab the first five characters, and it shows how breaking this example down piece by piece. For each section of five characters, we're going to reverse those and then you know, build it all into a string that we finally return. <clears throat> so uh, this is slightly more complicated than the previous problem, and, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that, right? All we need to do is a couple of things. One, here's the name of the function, so let's stub it. And we did this in the opposite order last time, but again, there's two ways to do this. We could stub the function first, or we could write our test cases first. And it doesn't really make that big of a difference, provided that we do both of those before we start solving the problem. So we'll say uh, input string, and then uh, delimiter. Delimiter is one of those words that I say a lot, but I don't have a firm definition, so let's look it up. Uh, delimiter. I don't even think I spelled it right. A delimiter is a sequence of one or more characters for specifying the boundary between separate independent regions of plain text. Eh. Mm, okay, so it's not, that's not really what we mean here. Um, n. n will work because we're flipping every n character. So we'll use n as our a name for the parameter there. Perfect. So, and then this will, you know, do stuff. We'll come back to that. Eventually, though, it is going to return a string. If it's returning a string, we should write our assert equal function. So assert equal is going to take an actual, an expected, and a test name. And I've mentioned this a couple of times, and uh, there's not really a great way to introduce this uh, currently in the course. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just demonstrate it here. This is a console. Uh, sorry, this is an assert equal function using template literals. So past isn't going to look any different because we're not interpolating any variables into that string. However, this one is going to look different, and I've never done it before, so hopefully it'll go properly. But 
essentially what we do is instead of a space here, we actually just uh, put, what is it? It's like a dollar sign and then those curly braces. Uh, so failed test name. And then we wrap a, essentially there's no need to put those pluses in there. And this is the syntax to tell it like, hey, this is going to be a variable coming in. So we'll say expected, and then we'll put our expected value. And then quotes around that, comma, but got, and then quotes. Now we interpolate our actual value. And then we put quotes on the end of that. And then that ends the string, that little backtick. Uh, but I've not done this correctly because, um, yeah, I definitely haven't done this correctly. Oh, this shouldn't go here. All right, perfect. And the reason I knew that I hadn't done that correctly was if you look at this back tick that I have there. Um, oh boy, it's giving me two now. Uh, so I have, when I had a back tick there, it's essentially ending that string here. So it thinks that the rest of this is another string, and then it doesn't really know what to do with this, and so it creates it into an additional string, just all lined up together. Uh, that's not correct syntax, though. This will be. Um, if this ends up breaking, that's okay. You should, at this point, know how to do it using uh, just the plus operator. But this is that thing that I keep talking about with string interpolation, and this does reflect the way that you would do it in other languages. So if you're coming here as a refugee from, like, Python, or, or a traveler, you know, from Python or Ruby or one of those places, um, I think there's a way to use SQL for this too, although I think I did that using Ruby when I did it. Anyway, this is just a new way to do what we've been doing previously and does allow you to do less of that, okay, did I add a space or not? And it's like, nah, you just, you just build the string as it was. And then instead of, uh, you know, plus actual plus the rest of it, you can just interpolate it using this syntax here. So, okay, so enough of that quick aside, which wasn't that quick. Here's what we are going to do. We're going to make two examples. One will be variable input one is going to be the input that they have up here, a short example. Uh, variable expected one is equal to this string right here. Oh gosh. What did I hit? Oh, I didn't hit anything. There we go. So, and then actual is going to be uh, flip every end characters called on input one and five, I think it was. And then we'll make a call to assert equal. And the call to assert equal is just gonna be actual one, expected one, and test name should be, uh, should work with input and n is five. And again, we've been over why the test names are really bad for these, but that's okay. Uh, variable input two is equal to Mm, and let's have a different one. So we'll have one that flips every seven, mm, every four. So we'll say A, B, C, D, and then E, F, G, H, uh, variable actual two is equal to. So if this was the input and we need to make an actual, we're going to call it with that input and what should the number be? Oh, right, we said four. And let's make that a little bit more complicated. Uh, e, F, G, H, okay, I, J, K, L. So if we think about what we expect this to yield, if we call flip every n characters with this input flipping every four characters, first one we look at is this set of characters. We're gonna flip those uh, in reverse. So that'd be uh, D, D, C, B, A. And then the next four characters, we're gonna flip those. So that's gonna be H, G, F, E, and then the last is going to be L, K, J, I. Okay, go. Go ahead and make another call to assert equal. Change to two, change this to two, should work with input, um, and N is four. Not 54, but four. Okay, and I keep hitting save, even though it's not really gonna do anything. Uh, so, I'm gonna run the code right now. Nothing's gonna happen unless I have some kind of an obvious syntax error. Good, so I got failed for both because I'm calling it with in, in two situations where it doesn't really need to be called, but the string interpolation that we tried down here is working because as you can see, the expected values are being nicely added as are the actual values. And the actual values as you can see are both undefined because we haven't defined our function yet. 
But we have our test case. Now we can kind of proceed directly to the problem, and we won't have to go back and adjust anything to show that our code is working after we do all of this, which can be helpful. So flip every n characters. We have an input string. We need a result string. But there's how we get there is not necessarily uh, like a predetermined situation. Now, a couple of ways for us to do this. And what I would say is that it's probably going to involve iterating over the input string by the like n value, which is to say the first thing we want to look at is the values from if we're going for an input string for five, we want uh, the one at zero, and I'm on line 16, two, or sorry, zero, one, two, three, four. So essentially, we want the string from zero to four, and we want to do something with that. Now, there is a way for us to reverse uh, elements, but they need to be in, a, in an array. So what I would say is what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, split input string into an array on no delimiter. Now this actually is a, like, a delimiter we're using properly here. Delimiter, we might not be spelling it correctly, but essentially what I mean by that is that we're not going to tell it to split on a space or on, on a certain letter. We're just going to say, hey, split all of the characters so it's an array of all of the characters. Now that we have that, we're going to iterate over the array of characters, um, and we'll say by n. So we're iterating. Last time we did by 2. We've usually done by 1. Now we're going to go by n. So in here, what it might behoove us to do is if we're iterating from n, let's slice the array from current position to current position plus n. Now, this is something where it might be a good idea for us to test this out first to make sure that we're actually doing this properly. So if that's the case, let's go ahead and grab our short example, and we're going to go down and take a quick side note to see if we're doing everything properly. So we'll say, well, I actually had a variable input already, so we'll call that variable input. We'll say variable split input is equal to input dot split on nothing. And then say variable first slice is equal to, hmm, what should first slice be equal to? Input dot split. Well, it's going to be split input dot slice. And theoretically, if we're going from the current position, the current position is going to start at 0, and then plus n is going to be to 5. So that sounds reasonable. But we also want to check to see if our second slice would work as well. So we'll say split input dot slice going from n, which is going to be 5, right? Because if, we have, if we're iterating by n, n is, or sorry, if we're iterating by n, i is going to start at 0, and we're going to cut to n from there which is the current position plus n. If we want to do that again, we're going to need 5, which is our current value for i at that point for the next iteration, because it's iterating by 5. And then we're going to add n again to that, so to 10. Now, I want to console.log. We're going to say first, first slice. And we're going to console.log second, and second slice. Now, it might seem like we're, we're taking a bit of an aside here, and we are. And the reason that we're doing this is because if we can prove that what we're up to here works, the actual code is going to be very simple. Because what we're doing is we're organizing a way for us to visually, oh boy, to visually visualize, uh, you know, terrible grammar, but also to visualize what's happening in the code when we're about to run it. So if we run this, let's see what we get. So the first one looks very similar to what we need here, just in an array format. And the same thing for this one, RT plus EX. So it looks like things are moving in, a, in the, uh, like a correct direction. We are going to save ourselves some time. We're going to say, hey, interviewer, can I assume that there's not going to be some weird kind of input at the end? Yes, interviewee, you can assume that. You can assume that the input string will be divisible evenly by n. So we're not going to have to worry about any of the undefined, like if it's, you know, we split every 15, sorry, if we, if we flip every five characters, but there's like 18, and there's that weird part at the end. Um, that's okay. We're, we're just going to assume that that's fine. And we just checked with our interviewer and they said it was cool. So now that we have that, if we slice the array and we have an array, it's easy to take this array that we've sliced and reverse that. So we'll just say reverse the array. And here is where what we do now is kind of like, well, we got to jump to the beginning, right? Because let's say that we'll create 
a result string and we're going to add all of the things to it. So reverse the array, join the array, the reversed array, add resulting string to result. And then at the very end, we're going to return the result, which of course is going to be outside of our for loop. So create a result string. We'll say uh, flipped is equal to an empty string. We're going to return that flipped. We're going to split the input string into an array. So we'll say variable split input, which is not a great. So we'll say characters. Say characters is equal to input string dot split on nothing. Also, we could probably comment out this as we're not really going to use it anymore. Iterate over the array of characters by n. Cool. Variable i is equal to zero. i is less than characters dot length i plus plus. But again, not plus plus. Plus equals n. That's how we're going to iterate by n each time. And we're going to delete that. Put the resulting curly brace down here. Now our for loop is all tight. Slice the array from the current position to uh, the current position plus n. So we'll say variable sliced. Mm, not great. We'll say current slice is equal to. And here's where what we're slicing becomes mildly tricky. Because what we're slicing is we're slicing the entire array. So we'll say characters, which is our entire array, dot slice. And we're going to slice it from i, which is our current position, to i plus n, which is the current position plus n. Now we want to reverse the array, so we'll say reversed slice is equal to current slice dot reverse. Join the reversed array, so we'll say joined slice is equal to reversed slice dot join upon nothing. Then we're going to add the resulting string to, the res to our result. So flipped is the name of the result, plus equals joined slice. Now, I, have, uh, I don't think I did this problem exactly the same way as I did in the reference solutions, but that's okay. Um, I think we have a pretty good result here. So flip every n characters, create a result string, good. Split input string into an array on no delimiter. Variable characters equal to input string dot split, perfect. Iterate over the array of characters by n, variable i is equal to zero, i is less than characters dot length, i plus equals n, perfect. Slice the array from current position to the current position plus n, so current slice is equal to characters dot slice from i to i plus n. Reversed slice is equal to current slice dot reverse, which reverses the array. Then we're going to join that reversed array and add resulting string to result. Now I actually made a little bit of an error here. I, it's not necessarily the case that you need to read out all of your pseudocode and your code the way that I just did. But if you do a quick rundown, maybe a little bit loose than what I just did, you might be able to find any like random errors before you run it. But we do have all these test cases, so it might be a good idea for us now to just run it and see what happens. And we're in good shape. So since we did everything correctly, we're going to copy everything, bring it on back, go to the submit the deobfuscated code section, hit run tests, and nothing really happens because all of the work that we were doing is happening over here. So let's take one quick look at it again. We read the entire problem out loud, we stubbed our function, we created an assertion function and a couple of tests to prove that our code works. We then came up with a way to solve the problem. At a certain point during solving the problem, we organized a quick test area where just determining the idea that we had is going to work in actual code. Then once we determined that, we wrote the actual code, hit run, because it passed, we're in good shape. So thanks for watching this video, hope you're enjoying them, and we'll see you in the next one.